going to walk you through a few basics in Proto.io, just a few minutes, and it'll get you started. So what I'm going to do is start with a new project, and what I'll do is I'll select my device. So I have an iPhone 10. I'm going to go to Phone. We'll select iPhone XR, which is just all of the 10s of the same size. I'm selecting my phone partly because you can load the Proto.io app on your phone. It's a free app. You log in with the same credentials you use to log in here, and as long as you're logged in as that, you'll be able to call your project up and test it on your phone, which is actually really cool. But you'll be able to see the effect here. So let me start with some basics. This is the canvas. You can add things to this project, text, shapes. Uh, Inspector lets you control elements once they're on here, like change text size and the typeface, uh, resize things like shapes, rectangles. Libraries are all the things that are available to you to start with. One of the things I like in here is you can use the search tool rather than go scavenge for things, or you can hit Command F and actually go look for things. So uh, I'll look for like a menu icon, and you can go find a simple menu icon like this one, which I'll use in just a minute. You can also find um, some default things over here. So you'll see like a task bar on here, a status bar. So some things like that are built into Proto.io. What I'm going to do is I'm going to search for a status bar. We'll start with that. And it should default to our phone type. So it'll actually find a status bar. There's one up here now. Uh, another element I'll add is a menu icon. Again, I just hit Command F. I'll go search for a menu icon. And I kind of like this one. Once it's on the screen, you can reposition it and resize it just by clicking and dragging. If I grab a corner and move it, It'll uh, get bigger and smaller. You can also hold the Shift key to constrain uh, when you're moving something like that so that it doesn't change shape. It'll, it'll maintain the same ratio, X and Y. And then uh, I can add some elements to it. So I'll add text. Um, I can just click text and drag it over here. If I double click in here, it'll highlight the text. And then from there, I can change the text. Let's, let's make it a lot bigger. And... Then I'm going to go look for different typefaces. So I've got the text on there. Let's say I want to center it on my screen at the top. I can just click this alignment, and it'll center it for me. Again, I'm going to double click on it, and then go over here to pick a different typeface. Uh, so I can scroll through and look at my different typefaces. If I don't like those typefaces and want to try a completely different new one, I can go up here to Fonts and preview a whole bunch of different typefaces. I'll double click here to highlight it. We'll go click. And we can use a cursive. That one's kind of fun. Uh, again, I'll make it even a little bit bigger. Easy enough. You can just jump over here and make it bigger. I can hit center again. It's in the middle. Now, if I want to add images, this is cool. If I go to libraries, I've got a, an, an area down here where I can drag and drop images in. So I'm going to grab four images over here, highlight them all, drag them all at once down in here. And I've got these things loading as assets. And so now I can just grab one of these and put them up on my display. Uh, let's see. We'll start with this one. I'll just drag it up here on the screen. Now I'm going to resize it. Right now it's enormous. A couple ways I could do that. I could grab this corner and drag it down, or I can just jump over here under Inspector and change it. So I'm just going to make that a couple hundred pixels. That makes it much smaller. I need to rotate it so it's vertically. So I can just click here and put 90. Now it's a vertical image can put it on my screen, drag it out so it fills the screen a lot more, and I'm going to hit Center up here at the top. Now it's centered. Now we can give that another title. I'll go back to Libraries, which gives me text. Drag text down here, and I'm going to change that type, I think. And again, I can center that item just by clicking this. So I've got a page built uh, just for fun. I can rename it. So I'll go over here to the left side, right-click on it, and we can rename it. Um, okay. We can also call that our home page if we want. Let me move this up a little because it's getting crowded by the image. So I can duplicate this one. Actually, yeah, let me go ahead and do that. I'll copy this page. I'm just going to right click on it and duplicate screen. It makes the whole page different. Now I can change my image. Back to libraries, grab another photo. I'll just drag this image up here. Same thing. I've got the image selected. I'm going to make it manageably smaller. Try about 300 pixels. Rotate it to 90 degrees. 
And what I like to do to, to align these is I can put it right next to the other one, drag this down until it's the same height. Once it's just the same height, click on the first image, delete it. Click on this image and center it. It's now in exactly the same place. I'll double click here. And I can center this text. I've got a second page. So again, I'll save the project up here in the upper right corner. What I'm going to do now is build some interactions. So, so one of the things I want to do is create a menu page. So let me do this. I'm going to create uh, another new page. I'll just do new screen. We'll let this one be blank. And let's see, what was on this one? Sleepy time. So let me rename this one sleepy time. I'm going to go to my menu screen, right click on this one and rename it menu. And now what I can do is just add some text to this. Again, back to library. I can double click text or I can drag text over here. All right, uh, let's say, I'll copy that and align it. This one will be, now what I can do is link these pages. So if I go to this one and click menu icon, I can now link the menu to the menu page just by grabbing that lightning bolt and dragging it over to menu. Uh, I'll go to sleepy time. It also has the menu box. I'll grab that, drag it to menu. Now I can go to menu, click on this text, drag the lightning bolt to fully grown, grab sleepy time, drag the lightning bolt to sleepy time. I'm going to save it and we'll have an interaction. So now I can go preview. It'll open in a new tab. I can go preview the app. So again, I've got my first page. I can click up here and click sleepy time. It goes to sleepy time. I can click up here, go back to fully grown, and I'm set. So we're off and running. Now we can change some of the interactions. So another thing I'll do is on the menu page, let me add a back button. Uh, and so the easiest way to do that again is I can go search and hit uh, Okay, so there's an arrow. I can double click on it. It'll appear on my page. We'll make it smaller. Move it down here a little bit. And now that, that interaction, I can have it go back to uh, this page. And so now I've got a new interaction on it. I've got a back button, which I can put on the other pages. And what it'll do is it'll go backwards just to the previous page. And so I can just make this icon. I can copy it, stick it on these other pages. It retains the position, which is nice. Uh, and so it's just nice interaction that now I've got a back button on all three pages. Another thing I want to change. When I go from this page to the menu, it's fine if it sweeps to the right. But when I click on sleepy time, I want it to go to the left. I want the, the direction of the effect to be the opposite. So that's easy enough. What I can do is go click on this and it brings up over here the interaction. I'm going to click on the lightning bolt on the right side. I've selected fully grown. Uh, I've got this, interac this uh, interaction chosen, the lightning bolt. If I go down here and click this pull down, it gives me options. So instead of slide left, I'm going to change it to slide right and I'll save it. And I'm going to do the same thing on this one. So I've clicked on this one. I'll click the lightning bolt come down here where these two lines are, click there and change slide left to slide right, and I'll go hit save. Now if we preview it again, I'm going to refresh the page just like we would if we were changing code. I can hit the menu and it'll slide right. If I hit this, it slides left and it goes back. So, so I've just changed that interaction really quickly uh, by adjusting the editor. Something else we might want to do is, let me do one more page over here. I can again duplicate this screen. Uh, we'll call this one, my dog passed out on the bed in a really funny way. You'll see in a second one that this one's actually hilarious. Let me bring another image up. This one, same thing. I've got to resize it. All right, we've got a new page and I'll center it. Now I'm going to do something a little different with this one. Let me save that page. We could add all the same interactions and stuff on it, but what I'm going to do instead is build on these pages. So let me copy this con Well, I'll do this in a sec. Let me go to this one. What I want to do is create a container that lets me scroll 
vertically. So I'm just going to show you how to do that. I'll go up here to size and I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. So I'll make it about uh, 35 so that I've got room to put another shape under here. I'm going to go back to libraries, grab a rectangle, and we're going to draw another rectangle down here. So what I'm going to do is make a rectangle that's the same size as this page and line it up right underneath. Okay, let me format this rectangle. I'll click on it and change the background color to white. Now, I'm going to go over here to this page and just copy this content. So I'm going to click here and draw a rectangle over it. Go back here and we'll paste that content down here. So let me just drag it down. So what I have is two pages that are together here. If I highlight all of these, I'm just going to click and drag and highlight them. Right click on them and I'm going to make them a scrollable container. And I'll go save this page, refresh so we can preview. Let me go to sleepy time and now I can scroll down to that other page because I made those a scrollable container. And you can make adjustments in here. You can turn on in a scrollable container uh, snap so that it jumps to the next page. You can also do this horizontally. So I'll illustrate that. Let me go back to uh, this one and I'm going to add one other rectangle to the right. Again, just to illustrate this, I'm going to format it again. We'll make the background white. Just going to highlight this text and copy it. Okay. I've got these two containers. I'm going to highlight those two. Right click, scrollable container. It defaults. Oh, we don't want omnidirectional. We want horizontal. All right, let me add a link here. I'll grab the lightning bolt, drag it over here so it's linked. And now that's going to appear on our menu page. So on this one, we have a vertical scroll, but on this one, we have a horizontal scroll down here. So that's a real quick way you can build containers and turn them into scrollable containers. Back here on the, uh, the dashboard, they've got, I don't mind leaving that one. Back here, if you go to learn on the dashboard page, They've got three really good tutorial videos in here that I strongly encourage you to go watch too. They're actually really useful and, um, and a terrific sort of one, two, three step through some of the stuff I showed you and then some other additional things.